Hello, this is Mark Gabor. We're now looking at a normal distribution problem. A large group of students took a test in physics and the final grades have a mean of 70 and a standard deviation of 10. If we can approximate the distribution of these grades by a normal distribution, what percent of the students A scored higher than 80, should pass the test greater than 60, should fail the test less than 60, and get an A, B, or C on a test, which is greater than 70. We know the answers to some of these because the standard deviation is 10, and we know the, um, the probabilities given the standard deviation. But we're going to use the functionality in Excel, the normal distribution, cumulative distribution function. And just as a recall, the cumulative distribution function gives the area of the normal curve at a point, in this case 1.18 for a standard normal distribution where the mean is 0 and standard deviation is 1, from minus infinity up to that point. So let's look at scored higher than 80. Well, that would be the white part, and we're looking for we can only find the blue part using the cumulative distribution function. So let's, let's look at our problem here. First, let's find out what the probability of x being less than 80 is. And it doesn't matter if it's greater than or equal to zero, uh, 80 or less than or equal to 0. The equal part doesn't matter in a continuous distribution. What's the probability that x is less than 80? Well, the functionality in Excel is norm.dist. In previous versions, it might be norm dist, but this is norm.dist. So we'll use that one. And we have to put in x, the mean, standard deviation, and 0 if it's a PDF, which we never use for the normal distribution, and 1 if it's cumulative, which we will use. So what do we get here? x is 80. The, standard uh, the mean is 70. The standard deviation is 10. And we want a cumulative distribution. So we get 0.841345. But that's probability less than 80. So if I want the probability of greater than 80, let's find out if the person got a B or A on the exam, I have to take the above and subtract it from 1 because they're complementary probabilities. And I would get this as my answer to the problem. One. So the probability of someone getting more than 80 in the exam would be 15.8%, 15.9%. What's the question in B? The question in B is, passes the test greater than 60? Well, again, the same problem. I can find the probability using the cumulative distribution function for less than 60. That would be this like the blue probability, except I'm going to be on this side of the mean this time. So I'm looking at a tail here. But I want the complementary probability. I want the other half of it. So let's find this and do the same 1 minus the probability that we're just about to find. So this is norm dot dist. And it's the same thing. Instead of 80, we put 60, but the other numbers are all the same. 70 comma 10 comma for cumulative distribution, and oh my, I get the same tail distribution I got in the previous problem. 15, 8, 6, 6, 5, but now I want to take 1 minus that, so I'm saying this is a very easy problem. I really only have to really copy this number, but let's do it the right way. So instead of less than 60, I want greater than 60. And what do we get there? Equals 1 minus 
this value. So here's my answer for B. I'll make it that way. And for C, they wanted to find out the probability of getting less than 60. Well, we just already calculated that, so why don't I just copy paste it? But instead of B, it's C now. So this is how I would prepare something like this. Of course, most of the problems that would be given in the book are much easier, much harder than this, and wouldn't be so simple and have so many of the same complementary answers. What's the probability of A, B, and C on the exam, which means he gets greater than 70? Well, 70 is the mean. At the mean, we end up with 50% on one side, 50% on the other side for because it's a symmetric distribution, the bell-shaped curve, the normal distribution. So we, if we will just confirm that we're going to get 50%, what's the probability that, in other words, we can only do the less than 70 here. So less than 70 is going to equal, and here we say equals norm dot dist and here we have 70 as observation 70 is the mean 10 is a standard deviation one again and if we don't get 0.5 we did something wrong we did get 0.5 and to get the complementary probability it's almost ridiculous to have to write it out but if we wanted to we could do one minus the above Oops, I'm sorry, I forgot to put the equal sign. One minus the above, and we'll get this. Now, normally, if we're going to do something like probability greater than 60, we could just do the one minus and then do the complementary probability. The better, you, the more you get used to this, the easier it is. So let's do this. Let's highlight that. Let's add another part, just for fun. E. What do we want E to be? What's the probability that someone gets between 75 and 85 on the exam. Now this is a little bit more difficult. That's the, like this probability, this yellow region between two numbers. Well, I can calculate up to the yellow region using a CDF, and I can calculate up to and including the yellow region using the CDF. And if I take the difference of those two probabilities, the larger minus the smaller, I will get the probability the in between. What does that mean? I want to take this. So this probability here, if I write it this way, is going to be equal to, and how would I write it? Let's leave another space here just to make it easier. It would be the probability of x being less than 85 minus the probability of x being less than 75. That would give me this in between. So here's where I'm at right now. That's what I want to try to calculate. So let's do that. Let's do that right here, right underneath. And what do we get? Well, we get equal norm dist dot dist. My observation is 75. My mean is 70. My standard deviation is 10. And I want a commutative distribution. Then I want to make the comp formula more complicated. And I would add another norm dot dist. And we get, instead of 75, I put 85. All the other numbers are the same. 70 comma 10 comma 1 parentheses and what did I do wrong I had some sort of error I have two parentheses don't need two parentheses there now how did I get a negative number I should not have gotten a negative number what did I do wrong because I had the smaller 
minus the bigger, even though I said not to do that. So I go here and I fix that. I should get the same answer except positive. So here's the answer to that. 24% of the people taking the exam will score between 75 and 85, or the probability of one person that's taking the exam to score between 75 and 85 is 24%. Thank you very much.